I have submitted an abstract for the pharmacology winter meeting 2013, and it was talk about one part of my PhD project, which is um, a studying effect of the process cycle analogs, which are um, one class of the available of the drugs that are used in pulmonary arterial hypertension treatment. Then also to culture endothelial cells from healthy volunteers and uh, pulmonary arterial hypertension patients, and compare if there are any differences between the two uh, between the cells from the two different donors. So when we treated them with different interferons, because interferons, interferons, they play an important role in the uh, prognosis of the pulmonary arterial hypertension. So we found that they responded different. Um, healthy cells, they, they, they didn't respond to the interferon gamma specifically, but the endothelial cells from the pulmonary arterial hypertension tend to respond more uh, to the interferon gamma, and we detected the response by measuring human cyclic uh, 10, and this was done by one of my colleagues, Dr. Peter George. In, in our group. So, and then and the, the other things that we found that um, endothelial cells from uh, patients, they tend to classify themselves into either high, l high endothelium or releaser, and then normal, and then you have uh, really low. So we think that um, by, cu by culturing endothelial cells from those patients and by uh, um, having those differences, we can know what kind of drug we can give to the patient. For example, the high endothelium-1 releaser, they, will they can benefit more from the endothelium-1 uh, blockers, while the low or the normal releasers, they won't benefit from it. So we can give them either phosphodiesterase inhibitors or prostacyclin analogs. And also, we, we need to study interferon gamma more to um, because we think and that it might it, it's playing an important role in the development of the pulmonary arterial hypertension. I do know people who have been affected with the pulmonary arterial hypertension, so and I know how severe it is, and I know how uh, um, sometimes when you tell people that you have pulmonary arterial hypertension, it, it could be like s the same as telling them you have cancer, and sometimes even worse, and they have a bad prognosis as well. So and and the available treatments like. Um, for example, if you have cancer, you will have a chance of curing. But then when, you, when, 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 so when they tell you that you have pulmonary arterial hypertension, the available treatments, they are not guaranteed that they will 100% cure patients. They help them mainly to maintain and tolerate um, uh, their disease. I think that they, um, the, the pulmonary arterial hypertension patients, they deserve some attention, they d deserve people and, and the and scientists to work hard in order to find either new way of treatments, new drugs, or new way of uh, drug delivery, because most of them, they will be having an intravenous or subcutaneous um, infusion of the drug, which is hard. And you cannot guarantee 100% that they will even make sure that uh, when they are changing the catheter, at their hygiene level, you cannot make sure that they will do it the right way. So I think that we should um, we should do more research and we should do more studies in order to either improve the available uh, drugs and available treatment, which are the, either the process cycle analogs, which is the f one that I'm interested in, or uh, the phosphodiesterase inhibitors, endothelin or the endothelin blockers, or try to modify them in, in a way that will prolong uh, the drug's half-life and also will make uh, the drug site-specific instead of uh, um, some of these drugs uh, act systematically so we can even prevent that and we can achieve the, the two goals by using na by applying nanotechnology and using a nanoparticle that can deliver the drug to the site of the action and also prolong the drug's half-life. So that's why I'm really interested in this field.